Sydney. Oxford chaps. Injuries rule out their chief playmaker Mickey Hazard and Martin Link from midfield. Surgery will keep out strongman defender Ross McLaren for the next five weeks. But Mark, uh, Swindon can travel with hope, uh, having recent success over tomorrow's opposition. Yeah, I think the last three or four years they've, they've uh, beaten Oxford quite comfortably. Kerslake scoring the first goal in the first meeting this season when uh, Oxford keeper Vesey failed to stop his shot. Uh, they have got the Indian side o sign over Oxford and they'll take quite a few supporters along there tomorrow. Good goal here, good cross from Bowden. Shearer sticks it in the net. Oxford do reply with their goal from Jimmy Magilton, who's been their outstanding player this season. Good midfield player, Northern Ireland international. And uh, I think he's a leading scorer for Oxford at the moment from midfield. That says a lot about him. It'll be a good derby game tomorrow, but uh, I fancy Swindon will be too strong for Oxford. OK. Now then, with Swindon selling Fitzroy Simpson to Manchester City this week in a half a million pound deal, a worrying trend, uh, Mark, is setting in in many ways for those Wiltshire Club supporters. Just remember this lot. We've had Alan McLaughlin, Phil King, John Gittins, uh, Paul Bowden, although he's now back, and Fitzroy Simpson. That's two and a half million pounds worth of players they've sold in two and a half years. Tough on the fans. It's tough on the fans, Roger, but apart from maybe, you know, the six top clubs in the first division, plus the likes of Blackburn Rovers, every other team have got to sell their players to survive. You know, financially, it's, you know, it's costing clubs nearly a million pounds a year. It's a lot of money. You've got to do it. As a manager, you remember Robert Maxwell taking away uh, your million million pound Dean Saunders. You didn't like that. What's Glenn Hoddle thinking? Um, well, I think it's a fact. It's a fact of life for him now, and he's probably got. He was probably told before he went there that he would have to sell players. So it's quite acceptable when you know that. So if they are going to make the playoffs, it's going to be the hard way. Most definitely, yes. A vital match tomorrow. Yeah, as I say, they've got the, the Indian sign over Oxford. A team they've had the Indian sign on for ten years now, and that's Sean Close helping himself to that goal. But Swindon's defence was lacking Ross McLaren, and it was to show, beginning with John Dernin converting that chance. Swindon were behind from Jim Mandleton's penalty, and although Glenn Hoddle was happily restored to action after five months of fitness problems, he was unable to prevent the tide going Oxford way, particularly when their youngsters were in control, like this lad, Joey Beecham. He really enjoyed himself throughout the match, as did other Oxford youngsters, and he made it 3-1 there. But before half-time, uh, David Mitchell had Swindon back in with a bit of a chance. The Oxford defence was also leaking, although this big lad, Mitchell, who's been working well for Swindon in recent weeks without scoring many, was very happy to see that go in the net. So, just 3-2 down, but soon after the interval now, Oxford's lead restored to a two-goal margin, Chris Allen making the chance for Dernin. Beecham was to make it 5-2, and that's the worst look to a Swindon scoreline since Glenn Hoddle arrived last spring. Before the end, Mitchell was to reduce the arrears to three goals to five, and Swindon must now look to travel better against Charlton in London tomorrow night. That's a crucial encounter between two clubs, both looking for the playoffs. <laughs>